Hi, oh, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It's December already. So the Christmas lights are rapidly beginning to appear. And of course, the meteorological winter has started. But is there any sign of snow as we head through the first half of the month? Let's see. Now, here's a view at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 2nd. There's an area of low pressure centre just to the northwest and an Atlantic flow moving across the UK. As I run the sequence, that continues to be the case. Disturbances move in from the west, showers, long spells of rain at times and the potential for strong winds. You can see that by the tightly packed isobars. So the picture at the weekend, it's continuing to be changeable. And as I run this through to conclusion, further areas of low pressure and weather fronts move in at times from the Atlantic, so they bring risk of further wet and windy spells. There is a chance of some very strong winds towards the end of the first week, but it's much too early to be confident about the details around that. It is something to keep an eye on. Well, with the weather coming in from the west, as is confidently being predicted here, the risk of snow for the first week at least is likely to be confined to high ground in northern Britain. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. The UK inside the red circle here. If you remember on these animations, it's the blues and the purples which are used to indicate cold air aloft at about 1500 meters above sea level. The mottled shaded area shows the track of a jet. Does any of the blue to the north of the UK make it down to our part of the world? Let's see. I think in a word, the answer is not really. The greens, at times the yellows start to push in. So upper air temperatures throughout the first week, close to or above the 30 year average. I think that's a fairly good summary of how things look like developing. Now, there will be day-to-day -day variations, so let's see some of the charts from the UKV model. Here's a picture on Wednesday. Temperatures close to the average on the left, maybe about 10 or 11 in the south, a few degrees lower as you head into Northern Britain and Northern Ireland. There are some showers in the west to begin with, and then later on, the possibility of outbreaks of rain spreading in from the Atlantic, so across Northern Ireland and into Western Britain. Thursday, that rain clears eastwards. There could be some snow over the Scottish mountains, as I've already mentioned, and temperatures not changing a great deal, perhaps a little bit chillier at this point with that cloud and rain. Friday, brighter conditions are returning, at least for a time, but then Heavy outbreaks of rain move up from the southwest. At this stage of the game, there is a little bit of uncertainty, of course, about the exact timing. And you can see the pink shade in there over the Pennines is suggesting that the rain could be preceded by a period of sleet or snow over higher ground. Temperatures, well, chilly in the north, but milder in the southwest in particular. But all in all, once more, it probably will feel quite chilly in the wet conditions. By Saturday, the rain is spreading further northwards and you can see some uh, snow over the high ground in Northern Britain still and in Scotland. But milder conditions are starting to return. Temperatures into double figures in southern and central regions, still colder in the north, but fairly close to the early December average. Sunday and Monday, the UKV doesn't reach this far. So the charts here are generated using the GFS global model. It's a rather mild picture by now. Temperatures up to about 13 degrees in the south or southeast on 12 on Monday, but fairly mild on, on both Sunday and Monday. And a little bit chillier as you head northward still, of course, over the Scottish mountains, it is significantly colder. But all in all, a changeable picture, some showery spells of rain, maybe long spells of rain, but also brighter intervals as well. 
the overnight lows will be varying. I think the frost risk is going to be quite limited. Not non-existent though. You can see the chart on the left is for Friday morning. It's a chilly start. Temperatures dipping below freezing in much of northern and western Britain. It's a few degrees higher than the southeast and northern Ireland. On Saturday though, significantly milder. Not temperatures around 8, 9 or 10 in the southern half of the UK. It's still cold at this point in the north, patchy frost remaining a risk there, particularly of course in the Scottish glens. But through the week as a whole, the nighttime lows will probably be trending upwards as we see the Atlantic flow really starting to get going. Windy as well, these are just being used for illustrative purposes. They are from UKV, showing wind gusts on Friday, so midday, uh, 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts in western coastal counties are strong winds spreading in land. So I think strong winds are something to keep an eye on really for much of the forecast period. Of course the details do need to firm up as the time approaches. And that's reinforced by the Mogreps G model. This shows forecast wind gusts for London. So going from 2nd of December through to the 10th, you can see around here on the 4th and then maybe on the 5th into the 6th, it's fairly windy. Maximum gusts are around 40 miles an hour. Then there's a big spread in the longer term as the runs start to diverge. But I think the strongest winds will often be in the west. This is the comparable chart for Cardiff. So we've got gusts maybe close to 50 miles an hour and then up to Newcastle so in the northeast but could at times be strong winds here as well you can see around the 6th we're going up to about 50 miles an hour uh, miles an hour at least according to quite a few of the individual runs within the ensemble so it's areas of low pressure track northeastwards across the UK and pull away there could well be some strong winds at times in northeastern areas rainfall the five-day accumulations here from the ECM and GFS models are showing significant amounts of rain in all parts of the UK, but once more, with the weather coming in from the west, the highest totals are in western parts of the United Kingdom. Moving forwards to the 10-day accumulations, they've continued to increase through days five to days 10. Yellows, oranges, and reds showing up now in Wales, and northwestern parts of Britain, so over 100 millimetres, particularly wet, and given the recent flooding and the wet conditions which those areas have had for large parts of the autumn, actually, there could well be more problems at times. So, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS. It has a deep area of low pressure centre to the west, high pressure to the southeast over continental Europe. It's a changeable or unsettled Atlantic driven pattern. Likewise with the Canadian model, which the initial animations this week were based on, there's a nasty little area of low pressure potentially moving towards us through Tuesday and Wednesday. That's what I suggested needs to be watched. The German icon, Atlantic based flow as well, low pressures to the west, high pressure to the southeast. The ECM, it's got low pressure here looking fairly threatening to the southwest, the isobars becoming closely packed ahead of it. The artificial intelligence version, this also looks unsettled with a small area of low pressure already over southwestern parts. And finally, the UK Met Office Global Model. Areas of low pressure to the west and a southwesterly flow moving up across the United Kingdom. So I think taking them all together, there's good agreement, but we're going to have further unsettled or changeable weather at least towards the end of the first week. With low pressure centered to the west, there's going to be a west or a southwesterly flow. And that means it's not going to be cold. The risk of snow through the first week restricted to the mountains of the UK. What will happen as we go through the second week? Well, of course, at this range, it's all about the general trends and probabilities, certainly not the details. 
So as usual, I'll start with a 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. Across the top, there's a fairly strong signal for mostly above average temperatures at the 850 HPA level. The ensemble mean, the thick purple line, is staying above the thick black line throughout the period. Also, there are lots of rain spikes there along the bottom, so the risk of rain is ongoing, potentially quite wet, and it ties in quite nicely with those 10-day precipitation accumulation charts I just showed. The two meter temperatures for London, daytime maximums across the top, nighttime lows on the bottom, lots of yellow to begin with. So those are runs going for a maximum between 11 and 15, very mild indeed. They are making up the majority of the columns in the first couple of days. There is something of a downwards trend, the amount of light green increasing, the amount of yellow decreasing. Light green forecast maximums are between six and 10, so much closer to the average through the middle part of the week. But all in all, the signal here through the days is for temperatures to be above the norm for much of a period because there isn't really much dark green showing up there at all. Those are colder and there are a few towards the end as the ensemble spread increases, but I wouldn't necessarily pay too much attention to them. The other thing, of course, which can drag up the average temperatures is high nighttime lows. And that seems to be the message which has been shown here overnight values not dipping below 6 to 10 degrees on most of the nights, at least in the London area, as I mentioned several times before, once you get out into more rural locations, values will be a little bit lower, but all in all, the frost risk in the southeast would appear to be below the norm. Up to Manchester, the positive anomaly here is smaller at the 850 HPA le level, so more runs are close to that average, oh, and although still a little bit above on balance, and it's a wet outlook. Lots of spikes continuing to show up there throughout the second week. I've not even bothered mentioning, mentioning the snow row until this point because the values are so low. Here are the two meter temperatures for Manchester, a bit down on the values which were shown for London. All in all though, it's quite a mild or averagely mild outlook through the second week, maybe just dipping a little bit towards the end. But as I said, that could just be due to ensemble spread. And it's always worth keeping an eye on to trends like this to see whether they continue. But at the moment, the picture is average to mild. Up to Glasgow and here the 850 HPA values are closer to the average. The thick purple line staying close to the thick black line, so there isn't really a signal for mild conditions here at this level at least. It's wet though, lots of precipitation spikes. Are there going to be rain or snow? Well, rain looks highly likely. The snow row reaches a maximum of 4 out of 33, but of course it's a different story for higher parts of the Scottish mountains. We're fairly close to average 850 HPA values, you would think there should be some snow over the Cairngorms, for instance. Here are the two meter temperatures for Glasgow, six to 10 is early on through the days. The dark greens perhaps becoming ascendant through the middle part of the week, so one to five degree maximums through the days. And the nighttime lows, one to five is dominant. A fair chance though of frost here. Quite a lot of blue in the nighttime columns. Those are runs going for below freezing points. So I think the message across the board here is a fairly average picture in Scotland, a mild one in the south. And basically the further north you go, the closer to the average you get through this period. It suggests the weather's going to be coming in from the Atlantic. Rainfall. These are the ECM probability charts. They show the chance of five or more millimetres of rainfall on the first three days of the second week. The orange and red shading there in western areas indicates a high risk, so between 60 and 80%. Moving forwards to the next three days, the basic pattern is similar. The colours are more washed out as the ensemble spread increases as we look further ahead. Perhaps a sign here that it could be starting to turn a little bit less wet, but the weather's still coming in from the Atlantic with the greatest 
greatest risk of significant amounts of rain in western parts at any given time. But I think rain for all of the UK through this period. What does the GEFS, mean surface level pressure data table for York, tell us? In a word, unsettled, lots of green, blues and purples in the columns. Those are runs which are low pressure dominated. But towards the end of the second week, there is a signal here at least for pressure to start building. You can see there's more yellow in the columns and also some orange. Orange is used to indicate runs which are strongly high pressure dominated. So perhaps, perhaps that's all it is at this stage, a sign that it could be turning a little bit drier as we head towards the end of the forecast period. Here's the GEFS mean surface level pressure snapshot chart for Friday the 12th of December. A low pressure centered between Scotland and Iceland, a west or southwesterly flow moving up across the UK. It's the same basic uh, story with the European ensemble, low pressure to the west, maybe more of a southwesterly rather than a westerly flow here, which would indicate milder conditions than the GEFS, although that was also relatively mild. Certainly both of these suggest there is no sign of proper winter, as many of you think of it. So to summarize, week one, changeable, with showers and longer outbreaks of rain, but also bright spells. Temperatures close to the average, particularly early on, but they trend upwards later. Windy periods, and with all that cloud, rain, and wind around, the risk of frost is limited. Week two, it's unsettled with further wet and windy spells, although it could start to turn drier towards the end of the week. Often quite mild, especially in the south, and once again, the risk of frost is limited. And through both weeks, snow is generally restricted to the hills and the mountains. So, there we have it. A changeable or unsettled start to the meteorological winter. My sledge is in the loft and it has been there for quite some time and I don't expect I'll be rushing to bring it down in the next two weeks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And as ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. It's really important to help me build up the channel. And of course, it means you'll not miss any of my future updates. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.